I mentioned last chapter how much I like this Kenma dude's power. As I, I really do enjoy very strange powers like being added for characters. Like, I, I can really enjoy, you know, a character having a very simplistic power or characters who have like a simple power that has a twist. But when you have like ones that are just completely like away from expectations or just are very, just, uh, there, there aren't many that kind of like would compare to it. Um, or at least in like main cast in Shonen. Like generally like characters have powers that are a lot more straightforward. Uh, you know, and then you can get ones that are very weird. And I like some examples of weird. You have Denji from Chainsaw Man. And then you have ones that are very simple in idea, but good in, like, very different and complex in a twist. It's like Natsu with, like, Dragon Slayer magic. Because, you know, it's, oh, straightforward, it's fire. But, like, the, you know, the complications of Dragon Slayer magic just add a extra level to it that makes it, uh, you know, stand out more. Or you can have one that's just like a, you know, plain element. Or in Deku's case, for the most part, like obviously he's got multiple quirks, but for the most part, super strength. Which is a very simple power, but it's done in a way that makes it very interesting to watch. And I, I do like that Iori has the shadow power, but this guy with the, uh, you know, with the staff, Kenma, I, I like his summons. Like, he's got these little te uh, Tengu, and they're not like the big... In, like scary Tengu like they're not like these giant like weird long nosed crow people maybe these are like babies of them or something but these guys are, are, are done in like more of a silly way they look you know, they're, they're pretty much like little flying balls that have the Tengu noses and I like that Kenma has this kind of per he has a personality very similar to that of uh, Odo Ishida from Bleach I think uh, I've seen people comparing uh, him to Uryu, just in the way that he has that very unconventional, not very unconventional, very not as standard weapon. You know, he's got like this cool monk spear um, and his personality, but uh, him having that personality while having these little summons that act, they, they act almost like, like little pets. And then you have a, like one that's like really kind of like an, like silly annoying and I, well in this case because considering i can talk i guess like little kids and you got one that's like a crybaby one that's always trying to get his attention one that's always just like super excited to see him but like drools all over himself i i, I like that he's got like these these little they're, they're they're little like almost troublemaker like summons they're they're, they're very loud and, and and seemingly like they'd be annoying to some you know probably like if you didn't really know him I, like, it just has this really nice kind of synergy between them and him. But I, my favorite part is, like, in this panel, the way that they all kind of, like, sit onto his weapon. And so he's got them each, like, in a, like, in, in this really nice, like, symmetrical style, like, on top of it. And them being sound base which is just really cool. Like, he's, he's essentially got this badass little sound spear. I, I do really like that. I think that's pretty badass, just looking at it and seeing it uh, utilized. And then after that, like, you know, they ended up defeating this phantom, you know, this messed with them. You have Iori come back, and uh, Riku ends up thinking that it's a fake, goes and attacks him, but it's the real one. And, and then right then, you have one of the mirror phantoms, like this arm, come out and grab... Uh, Riku and drag her into the shadows just trying to you know pull her in there and use her as like a hostage to take these guys down and stuff and while they're working on it like uh, Iori's shadow he has to use more of it because like he can't do much with like the small shadow dagger he has pulls up like a way bigger form where he's got like molt like this big layer of shadow over his body and then he's got like a more of instead of like a dagger it's like a shadow katana starts to go in for like attacks but it's like, oh, his, his deflection ability isn't really working the same. But whereas, um, whereas, like, Iori's, or Iori has his own skills, but here's, we're seeing Kenma's, and he's got, like, this one where his, uh, Divinity power with his, uh, Tegu, it helps him kind of, like, analyze his opponent, and he's able to find, like, the right spot to attack, and goes, and ends up, you know, destroying the bear uh, the mirror so now he couldn't use his reflection ability and that's when 
you have Yori just go in and do like this badass slash. I like the way that like with the shadows over his uh side of his face, he has like a different style of his eye. That's one of those things that like exists in a lot of series where characters like you see like oh something with their power gives them like some special ocular like display like uh, Sharingan, um, like Gia stuff like that where it's just like oh you know they have some strange mark or, or a different like pupil in your eye. I've always liked that. I've always really liked that kind of uh, setup. I always thought that was cool. So I mean I'm happy to see that in this. But then Yori just goes and you know takes this guy out. It was. A really fast chapter, like very legitimately, it was a very fast chapter. Like the only parts that seemed to like take a lot of uh, a lot of time, just kind of like conversing, was explaining about how uh, how Tenma's powers work. And I'm hoping to see more of them because I I do like his his weird Tengu staff sound powers. I think that's really cool. I think he's got a lot of potential more to display like what other aspects he's got, and I think he works well personality wise and synergy with the main character they, 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 they've got some nice clashing sets to them but for the most part like i said it was it was like pretty quick to read like there wasn't a whole lot to, to really kind of go over with this you know it was a power display and then you got to see them kind of like do some nice teamwork so definitely looking forward to seeing where more of this series goes to and what kind of other things we're going to kind of like witness for like powers and uh you know the enemies when we're going to like start finding out probably uh, you know the bad guy group and, and whatnot who's going to be like the first like kind of boss character because none of the guys we've seen so far obviously only five chapters in have been threats these guys have all been relatively easy for the characters to defeat so it, it's going to be interesting to see like what what exactly is this author going to do with this you know Pretty, pretty interesting setup for the style, you know, with the main character uh, being kind of an asshole, being pretty selfish, and like doing all the stuff for his own sake. And then you have, uh, you know, uh, Rinku's like very, very wanting to help and selfless, uh, you know, personality. The, the way that like just, they're an odd duo for this series to kind of focus around. So, whatever the villains are going to be like, I think are also gonna, just going to be very unconventional, very strange. But we're looking forward to that. But anyway, other than that, though, comment below. Tell me your thoughts about this chapter. And tell me your thoughts about the series. And I really appreciate the thumbs up the video. Friend, the like button, subscribe button, and check out my other videos. But other than that, every chapter is already subscribed. And I thank you all for listening. Bye.